Hello? Are you back in, mate? Oh, I'm still here. Yeah, what happened then? Running away? Uh, bloody Spanish Wi-Fi. Who knows? Hello? No, gone now. Right, well, let's get Chris back. Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Reese here from More Than Lifting with the More Than Lifting podcast. And my friend and fellow co-host, Christ Thatcher, Mr. Christopher Thatcher.com himself. You want to say hi, mate? Hello. You know what I really love is that you almost call yourself Christ Hatcher a couple of times. Yeah, it has happened. I, that I have is to, awesome. Uh, I have to do it. <laughs> anyway, we're talking about body weight training, calisthenics, gymnastic stuff, handstand stuff, clean and snatches, Chris's fun times, holiday in Madrid, and all that good stuff. Um, this week, first off, I want to have a little, quick little confession, Chris, if you don't mind. That's all right, mate. Um, is actually, it actually exactly what is this? I mean, because is this, we've got a parental advisory sticker on the podcast, but there are limits. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not that story. <laughs> oh, okay, good. All right, well. Yeah, don't worry. Okay, it's yeah, that's a check. secret, mate. Secret. Okay. Cool. But, um, yeah, so I'm having to defer my announcement of our scores for Rock, Paper, Scissors tournament because we're actually batching this, the, this and the last episode because... Uh, Chris is obviously in Spain doing his own thing and we don't have all the time in the world to sit and chat for three hours like we normally do every Monday or Wednesday. So I'm going to have to defer it. Also, it gives Chris a little chance to catch up with his score. It gives you a couple of episodes to win those outros. All right, mate? Cool. So I'll give you a little bit. Challenge accepted. Awesome. I'll give you a little bit of a buffer like that. And then episode 25, quarter of a century. Guess what, mate? The truth is out. At the minute, I think I'm ahead of you by a couple. Okay. So you've got some catching up to do. All right. All and right. I'm not going to make it easy for you. Because that's no, not what competitions yeah. are about. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to gimme. I want you to, you know, I want you to do your best, you know, meet me, meet me head on. And uh, yeah, see what cool happens. Beans. Yeah, right. Uh, guys, in this episode, we're going to talk about getting a training partner, having someone to be accountable with or to, or someone to, about your level, who you're pushing with, who you turn up to the bars or the gym or comes around your house in the evening to do a couple of press-ups with each other. Because it's, it's a huge game changer in terms of actually training. Uh, or at least it was for me. I mean, I'm not sure about you, Chris, but I imagine it was about the same. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, I would probably say throughout my, my training life, the, some of the, maybe not, maybe not all, but some of the biggest periods of, of progress have generally gone hand in hand with me actually working with someone and having someone else there to make sure I'm not just turning up to the gym, but I'm also pushing myself as hard as I can and it's where the power of say personal training comes into play because just having the energy of another human being standing there guiding you through it knowing that they're there to spot you through things watching them even demonstrate something I mean I don't think we think about it all that much as coaches just by virtue of you showing someone what they're going to do next and doing it really really well it makes someone think okay yeah there's a little bit of a competitive element to that you know I've got to live up to that I've got to try and push myself and You know, in in the initial stages, that can be a little bit intimidating when it's a a client trainer relationship. But obviously, when it's a training partner relationship and you're maybe on point with that someone, or, you know, as in they're at the same level as you, or even just a little bit further ahead on some things and you're a bit further ahead on others, it can create a fantastic dynamic to help you really smash through some, uh, some boundaries as you're pushing through. Yeah, 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 definitely. I've made the most change when I've been training with someone. And it's not to say that training by yourself isn't effective because I've pushed well beyond those boundaries since then training by myself. But being able to train, having someone to turn up with and battle against, because that's what it is, is a little competitive edge, like forcing yourself to be that one step ahead of them. Oh shit, he just done 11 pull-ups, I'm going to do 12, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just yeah, something yeah. simple like that is, has a dramatic effect on your, your, um, your results. The most obvious form of having a training partner is actually having someone there with you in person so a guy girl someone that can actually meet you at the gym and be there in a physical capacity to spot you through to actually train with as we said before to be a bit competitive with to push yourself alongside but there are other aspects of having a training partner that you can benefit from without having 
them there all the time or even any of the time. So for example, one of the guys I uh, used to train with regularly, we don't actually live anywhere near each other now. Uh, he still goes to my old gym that I used to own and I live further away now, but we'll still post stuff up between each other in a WhatsApp message. So he'll send me videos of stuff that he's doing with kettlebells and barbells and, and training in general. I'll do the same. So we're checking in with each other, showing what we've achieved, you know, other things we've progressed on from when we were actually working together as well. And it just, again, creates that little degree of accountability, a little bit of competition, making sure we're kind of staying true to the things that we've said we were going to work on. So it doesn't have to be always an in-person thing. There's obviously massive benefits of actually being there with someone um, but equally it could just be someone that you align with and that you get and you know take Reese and I for example you know we'll talk about our training we never actually train together but we'll ask each other about what we're doing we'll you know we know somewhere in the future we'll have uh, an opportunity to get together and actually show each other what we've got <laughs> in a training capacity that's it i'm coming to spain damn straight <laughs> mate you're more than welcome you know I've, we've got a nice apartment here you know feel free to jump on a plane and, and head out so i'd love to i genuinely can though but <laughs> if, if mate if the situation circumstances uh, were a bit better and you would say that to me i'd literally i'd live right by gatwick airport i'd be straight over well look mate it's uh, it's an open offer for the next three and a half weeks or whatever it is so um, even if you just come out for the night it's only a two-hour flight really so you know you could come out here have a few beers and then go home the next morning so so who, who knows? It's it's all possible. Yeah, have a quick training session. Yeah, we we'll go down go down. You know El what? Actually, now I'm I'm well excited about it now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's not dwell on this right now because uh, no. we'll we'll get this stuff done and we can dwell on it another time later this evening <laughs> by ourselves. We can marinate it in it, and I'll 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 tell you when I bought the tickets. <laughs> awesome stuff. Look forward to it, mate. So no, yeah, we can you know do a multitude of different things um, with you know someone else in terms of you know motivating without actually having to physically be there. So don't feel that just because there's no one that you know nearby or someone at your gym that you would want to train with that you can't actually have a training partner. You know the the rules still apply in terms of ultimately creating a degree of motivation and accountability that you know is going to help push you through your training yeah i think this is one thing that's very much overlooked is that because when you think of training partner you think of someone in person all the time mm. i do anyway mm. and uh, there are actually a few people who i message back and forth who i have vi little videos with who i i learn a new thing and i'm like yeah i've just learned this like even if it's just messaging someone who you know like you say, aligns with your philosophy on training or your goals, then it's great to have that. And also it's great to have it in different capacities. It's good not to just have one person that you're accountable with. It's good to have a couple. Mm. And if you do a bunch of different styles of training like we do, whether it's your martial arts, your gymnastics, your uh, parkour or golf or whatever, having someone in each little kind of bucket of your training is even more beneficial so when I go down the gym, there's a couple of guys, right? Because I, I don't go down that often anymore. Now winter's kind of over. And there are a couple of people who I know relatively well. I don't really know their names. It's one of those relationships, do you know what I mean? Where you're like, all right, mate, mm. all right, mate. And then you have a chat for 20 minutes and then you carry on, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't know much. Don't, don't know. I know loads about the guy. I've got no idea what his name is. Yeah, but, that's... but these kind of people are really great for in-the-moment stuff. Yeah, so when you're in there and you're actually, you're, you know, you're, you're in the zone, you'll see these people, like whether it's just down the gym or whether you're at your dance class or whatever. And those people are great for accountability in that, that asset, like that part of your life. And then when you go to your other session or you go down the gym or you go to your other discipline, you have different people who are trying different things and they've got different approaches and they've got different angles. And... Yes, they don't need to be in person. Yes, it, it, in that instance, these guys probably will be in their thing, but having loads of different people and building this kind of accountability network and motivation network is hugely, hugely beneficial for you long term. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't have said it better myself. You know, if you have a multidisciplinary approach to your training, or any aspect of your life, you know, just having someone you can check in with who's like minded, who gets where you're at you know they understand what your mindset is around that particular area of your life it's it's hugely valuable you know you can't underestimate the power of that even just having one person to check in I mean fortunately like you say in training we both have different people to check in with as far as dis different disciplines go 
with the business stuff that we're both involved with. We have different people that we'll check in with about different things. So, you know, whether it's a mastermind or a training group or a, a sports team or whatever, you know, it, it's so, it's fun because... It's just your mates. Yeah, it's, it's fun because you've got, you know, you can have different conversations. I think one of the dangers as far as our own personal development goes is that we end up having the same conversations with the same people about the same things all of the time. And, you know, you're not really expressing the full scale of your potential personality because you just limit yourself to the kind of day-to-day mundane conversations you know with the same people at work and the same friends and obviously you know your your partner your family you know a lot of the stuff tends to be a little bit small talky and you know that's okay there's a place for small talk you know I'm I'm not anti small talk Mm. I'm not anti water cooler chat you know it's just you know is that really what you want your life to be (laughs) you know you want to find different ways of expressing yourself and you know when you get into certainly into fitness training and you see this all the time with people starting things for the first time you know whether it's just getting into the gym whether it's starting up with calisthenics all you want to do is talk to people about it all you want to do is kind of find other people to chat Mm. to about that because it's this new whole new world that you've just suddenly opened up into and you know it's great to kind of have other people to chat to about that because your regular friends and your family and people around you may not understand what it really really feels like you know they may not understand the struggles that you go through with it you know the motivation difficulties you know and obviously your desire to actually continually push yourself you know even for some people just the notion of getting up and going to the gym every day it just seems so alien you're like some sort of freak of of nature because that's you know that's what you choose to do whereas it's great when you talk to other people where that's just as normal as you know, going to sleep at night or drinking a glass of water. It's just life. That's what you do. And, you know, you want to try and surround yourself with as many of those people as you can to maintain the momentum as you go through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what's even better is if these people are slightly ahead of you because they can give you actionable advice. That's stuff you can actually use so you can massively, massively scale up your learning process and you can develop a lot faster as well. Yeah, Completely, 100%. So I think there's, I'm not his biggest fan, I'll be honest. I don't, I have a lot of questions around the authenticity of what he does, but Ty Lopez, uh, obviously in personal development and oh, yeah. business space, one of the thing, the takeaways from his TED Talk was the thir- what he called the 33% rule. And it was in any aspect of your life, whether it's in your business, just your, your general character development whether it's your training it doesn't matter you focus on trying to spend you know a third of your time with people who are behind you so you take on a coaching mentoring teaching role to people who are coming up behind you that you can pass on uh, information and wisdom to you spend a third of your time around people at the same level as you these are your peers these are the people that you're competing with a little bit more directly because there's a healthy uh, competition, a healthy motivation that comes from that as well, of working, like we said, with like-minded people who are at a similar level. And then you spend a third of your time with people who are further ahead, You know, whether that's people intellectually, physically, whatever, who are more advanced than where you currently are, then obviously you're, you become the student then. So it's a really healthy balance between, as I say, being a teacher, being a peer, and being a student. And that allows you to continue. And it's something we talk about in martial arts all the time. It doesn't matter even if you're a tenth Dan, you know, highest possible grade you you can get in Tang Soo Do, which is the discipline I follow. You're still a student. There's still always going to be someone further ahead that you can learn from. And equally, you're perpetually the, the master and the teacher teaching other people behind you. And yet you're also training with your own peer group, the people who are around the same level as you. It's the only way we continually, continually develop. Mm. I think it's really healthy to be in that kind of, in in all three of those roles as well, so that you are, because they all benefit each other, so your learning will help you teach other people, but your teaching will help you understand it, and then your peer group Mm. in the middle are guys you can chill with when you're not learning or teaching. But what we're trying to, we're not trying to say... I've had had huge breaks. Go on. Go on. Uh, No, no, I was going to say that doesn't mean you need to find... 15 friends a a coach a peer and a student in every aspect of your training you don't need three guys (laughs) down the gym or three guys here and three guys there it's just having being aware of that kind of split and that perspective on it so you know that you are going to be uh, or that you will benefit massively from teaching a little bit from being taught a little bit and accepting it and 
also working on a level with your probably your more general training partner, the guy who's on that level who you are competing with to hit your goals, to overcome your plateaus, etc. Ad infinitum. Yeah, I think I think the most important thing that, that's a, that's hundred percent true and. You shouldn't force these things. You know, you shouldn't try and, as you say, set out to deliberately find people just for the sake of finding them. You know, a lot of the time, yes, you know, have set the intention that, okay, I would benefit from finding a training partner. I would benefit from finding a good coach. I would benefit even from finding potential students, people to learn from me. But, you know, there's an old saying, obviously, in uh, it's an Eastern saying, it applies very much to sort of martial arts and whatnot, but it's a general term as well that, you know, when the student is ready, the master will appear or the teacher will appear. And, you know, this that's a phrase that kind of gets pulled apart and unpacked and dismantled and critiqued and whatnot. But, you know, the, the core essence of it is that more often than not, and I've found this in so many aspects of my life, that when I've got to a certain stage where I need someone to step in, whether it's through me setting the intention to find that person or just because I'm delving into spaces and areas and going to places and putting myself out there in a way that clearly says I'm looking for that next step, that next bit of information, that next bit of support, accountability, whatever it may be, it tends to happen. You know, there is an organic element to this. There's a natural kind of fluidity to life that all of a sudden these things can just happen like I say, very naturally. And, hmm. you know, I don't think you should force things too much. Just set the intention of that being something that you want to bring into your life on some level and put yourself into certain circumstances and opportunities where it can actually become a reality as well. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. And another thing about these roles, because they are massively important and I, I uh, have the same kind of battles with Ty's stuff, even though I was one of the first people on his 67-step program, I'll have you know. And I was the only one who yeah, emailed you him actually, saying you... it didn't... Go on. I emailed... No, I was going to say, you're, you're telling the story, so go on. Yeah, I was the only one who emailed him to say he hadn't released his fucking 67th step yet. He left me hanging for ages, which means that no one else in that time... I was waiting on day 67 for the 67th step to come out, and I waited a month before contacting him because I thought oh no it's probably just this or or you know whatever I was the only one who contacted him and otherwise I, I, he probably wouldn't have put that 67 that for another month he was only doing that because someone mm. chased him up because he knew someone was at that point and I went through it for free because it was when he first started coming out in this and I jumped straight on it because I knew I needed these particular this this little bit of mindset education and a bit of a shake up yeah but, he, it's an in, it's an interesting thing with him, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, I've seen I've seen a couple of things that really massively discredit his portrayal of his life. Like, I don't I don't disagree with a lot of stuff that he says. You know, the like I said, the the third the the rule of thirty three. You know, the thirty three percent rule. I, yeah, that that makes complete sense to me. And there's a lot of stuff about education and learning from books and acquiring knowledge and then obviously applying it in a certain way that's hugely valuable. I just don't trust the how it's dressed up as this is my life and this is what I've accomplished because of these things you know I think you it, it, there, there's a lot of uh, yeah there's a lot of ways you can kind of question it but anyway that's not what we're about here so sorry tangents no no that's fine no you know what we haven't had a good tangent in a while and um, <laughs> I, I when I first heard Ty I hated him I'll tell you why because he was disputing my spiritual beliefs he was saying um you know this doesn't matter that doesn't matter and uh he was actually right but what he was saying the way he was portraying like the way the words he actually used and the way he said it i took a different meaning out of it so i was sitting there going oh fucking hell mate what's he on about like there's no point in sitting around meditating or anything like that that's not actually what he was saying in this it, it was like the first interview that he that i know that he had done and uh, I, I was sitting, I actually turned off the podcast. I was like, fuck this guy. Do you know what I mean? Next thing I'm signing up to his program. Because <laughs> I sat there and I <laughs> marinated on it. And I was like, you know what? I've, I've, I, well, I've taken that, what he said too personally. And I've, I've dressed it up and I've added my own meaning to it. And that's not actually what he said. And I later found out that it's not what he meant either. Uh, which you, is, were, you were reflecting. Yeah, yeah. Which is very powerful. Um, but what, what was I going to say? Sorry. The, um, yeah, one thing to understand about playing each of these roles is that you don't necessarily have a fixed person in each position at any one time. 
when I'm at gymnastics, I, I end up helping loads of people out because compared to a lot of people, I'm relatively advanced. So I know a lot of shit and I can help people learn a lot of stuff. So I'll often spend a bit of time with people giving them a, some coaching on fixing up their handstand or getting them ring muscle up or whatever. And it'll be a different person every week. But every week I'll be playing that role in some manner, as well as being taught by my coach. So in the same hour and a half session, I'll have kind of both spectrum, both ends of the spectrum. Plus I'll be dealing with a couple of people who are on my level, who I'm working with, who I'm training to develop certain skills with. So it's not like you need like one person is your coach forever in that discipline and one person's your peer and one person's your the guy that you teach it can change week on week in week out it can you can switch between multiple roles in one session and uh, it's a it's a fluid like you said it's developing it's constantly changing so don't think that you have to go out and find someone that you're going to coach your little bit of knowledge or whatever and someone who's going to teach you for the next three months because it can be one session and then next session you can come back and you can share what you've learned with somebody else. And it's a very organic process that's continuously yeah. feeding in from each part. Yeah, and there, there, are, there are so many parallels between gymnastics-based sessions like that and, and martial arts. You know, because you, you know, in, in our sessions you will suddenly transition from you know, one minute you're being taught, next minute you're teaching, next minute you're competing alongside someone at the same level and it's back and forth back and forth and you're really having to you know shift from one mindset to the next you know now I'm absorbing information now I'm applying information now I'm sharing information and mm. you know that's a really interesting psychological process to go through and I won't talk about it now because it's a whole other subject but um, I think I may have raised it in private prior episodes I'm not sure but this concept of voice dialogue about refining the skill of being able to transition between your different characters your different voices the, the varying parts of your personality and doing that consciously rather than actually just having it happen reactively so actually saying okay in this instance I am the coach in this instance I'm the student in this instance I'm the businessman in this instance I'm the partner slash husband slash wife you know whatever your role is in that relationship and doing it in such a way that there's no overspill from the other so there's it's not a case of right I'm sitting here doing my work on my computer and my partner walks in and she wants to talk to me about you know something that's gone on with her day you know it's not me then trying to listen to her but really actually my head's still in the email that I'm writing you know I've not you know, yes, I'm trying to react to her being there, but I'm also clearly not fully present with it. And that applies, I think, massively in, in that scenario, like you just explained. It, it, that practice of being in an environment where you have to transition very, very quickly from one to the other, it's a really great psychological skill to, to cultivate. And if you're the more conscious you are about having the ability to do that, the better you'll become at doing it, not just in a training environment, but also in every other aspect of your life as well. But we can talk about that in a bit more detail, maybe do some psychological stuff further down the line because I think it's a really powerful mindset uh, skill to acquire. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a really good idea, actually. We should we should touch on something like that later on. Um, but I am, speaking of mindfulness, being mindful of the time. Indeed, I know yes. you've got to do a spinny, haven't you? So yes, should we I do have. rock, paper, scissors to finish? Yes, indeed. Right then, okay, let's not, it took four goes last time, let's just do it in one this time, yeah? Okay. After three, four, ready? Okay. One, two, three, rock. rock. Ooh, knew that was coming. Double just, rock, ah, oh, double just rock, knew it. you cheap bastard. Okay, I'm pretty go, sure go. there's a delay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, ready? One, two, three, scissors. Paper, ah, oh, shut down. Wee one up for Reese, mate. I'm giving you a chance to catch up before we reveal the scores, and you're losing. What's I going know. on? I have to start pulling right. out the wild cards again. Okay, guys. Yeah, we have to get back on the wild cards, guys. We haven't done a wild card for at least two episodes, so it's going to get pretty crazy when they come back. I tell you that much. Um, okay, cool. So, outro it is, mate. Sorry, I'm 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 nervous about doing the outro, so I'm trying my best not to start it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it, man. Just jump. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm leaping, I'm leaping. Right, uh, so that's it, guys, for this episode. Um, catch up with us on socials at any point. If you have liked what you've heard, hit subscribe, leave us a rate and review, share it with your friends, post it on Facebook. 
send us an email or a shout out on Twitter at Coach Thatch, at Reese Morgan, at ChristopherThatcher.com if you want to get onto old Chris's website. If you're in Madrid, go down to the Street Workout Park. What's it called? El Retiro. El Retiro. Get down El Retiro in Madrid and look out for a crazy white dude because that's Chris and he wants to meet you and be a peer. He might appear, he might be an apparition. <laughs> There's so many peers we've got going on around here. Um, yeah, that's about it though, guys. Um, like I said, check out More Than Lifting. Show notes are on morethanlifting.com slash episode 20. Blimey, 20 weeks we've been doing this. Chris, that's all right, isn't it? Oh, no, it's crazy, man. It's uh, been a fun journey so far. It has. Uh, you know what, I absolutely love doing this. It's so good. Even though like, we mostly just chat shit. It's so much fun. No, we, we, we chat shit interspersed with huge knowledge bombs and uh, value chunks. You know so. what, we do actually. I, I listen back to a couple of episodes because I've been catching up on my show notes and some of the stuff we say in there, it's like, I'm having revelations. I'm having epiphanies <laughs> galore. I'm like pulling them out of my ears. So <laughs> yeah. I know that we do provide a fair bit of value to people as well if they enjoy our waffle as well <laughs> indeed if you, can, if you can get through the waffle then somewhere in there there's some uh, decent decent content to be found yeah and if you're struggling to find that decent content go to morethanlifting.com slash episode insert number here so in this case it's episode 20 and you'll get the show notes with all the takeaways all the fun stuff all the bonus things a couple of little jokes and uh, maybe a link to iTunes or Stitcher where you can find this podcast all over again find it anew rediscover body weight training and all the cool stuff we're offering you <laughs> <laughs> definitely cool well look I mean it's been fun but uh, must run so uh, yeah Thanks for listening today, guys. And uh, yeah, reach out, connect, subscribe, rate, review, all the cool things. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Absolutely, guys. Catch up with you next week. Until then, keep in touch with yourselves. Love, 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 love. And I'll see you. And see you. Bye. <laughs> see you later. Set up. Mate, I've just got the best picture. I'm Skyping it to you. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so happy I noticed this. Dude, you get off because I know you got to get going. I've just got your first Christ Hatcher vinyl release cover. I'm forwarding it to you now on Skype. It's brilliant. <laughs>